Investing. Ugh, it's hard, it's emotional, and look, in a turbulent year, it's hard not to throw your investments in the toilet. To chase the thing that's working right now, I'm getting rid of that thing that just didn't work in 2023. But before you flush all your SCHD down the toilet, you're probably gonna wanna watch this because there may still be hope in 2024. Oh my God. You know you could just buy more. It didn't perform that bad. There's no need for that. But what did happen to SCHD in 2023? And will it possibly do well in 2024? Well, we need to understand how SCHD works. This is a graphical representation of the methodology used by SCHD. More on this later, because you might be like me and you're thinking to yourself, okay, I have this portfolio. And inside this portfolio, I have all these different stocks. Maybe I have VOO, for example, a 26.32% rate of return in 2023. I'm gonna keep that one probably. And then I have triple Q. Wow, 54.85% return in 2023. Yeah, I think I'll be keeping that one too. But then there's maybe some other ones in here, like uh, AMC, for example, down 82.96% in 2023. Yeah, oh yeah, okay, I'm getting rid of that one. And then you have SCHD, up 4.57% in 2023. <sighs> SCHD, SCHD, what happened to you in 2023? I think I did figure some things out, but let's start off. And where I think is the most important part of this whole thing, is to understand SCHD. The way SCHD works, there's a methodology it uses just like almost any index fund or ETF. SCHD itself starts off with something called the Dow Jones Broad Market Index, and there's about 2,000 526 companies that I've estimated that could potentially go into this index. So once SCHD has all of these potential companies, it first takes out real estate investment trusts. I approximate that there's about 225 real estate investment trusts that are inside that Dow Jones broad market index. So I'm gonna go with 2,301 stocks left over that are non-REITs. Now, SCHD goes even further. It defines its universe of stocks. And to do so, there are three pieces of criteria that each of these stocks have to pass to make it to the next level. So the first is that every single stock has to have at least paid a 10 years of consecutive dividend payments. That's why so many people who do love dividend investing love SCHD. Only stocks that have paid at least 10 years of dividends are gonna make it in here. The next two factors, they're a bit more minor, but only stocks are at least $500 million of market cap, which is basically just saying like how big these companies are. So. So some small cap companies can actually make it into SCHD. And also these companies have to be somewhat liquid, $2 million average daily trading volume over a three day period. Basically there just has to be some people buying and selling the stock enough so that it's not a thinly traded company. So just these three factors alone, I approximate about 1,851 companies get knocked out. So only 450 companies are left inside this universe. And then SCHD goes even further. There are four different factors that it now uses to rank which stocks are gonna make it into the top 100 stocks that make it into the portfolio of SCHD. First off, free cash flow to total debt. Zero debt companies, companies with no debt are gonna be ranked higher. Next up is IAD yield. Basically, it's just the dividend yield, so it ranks higher dividend stocks. Next up, there's net income divided by shareholders' equity. And then finally, there's the five-year dividend growth rate. It takes these four factors for each stock and the best of the best that make it through these four factors make it into SCHD's portfolio and only 100 stocks are gonna make it in. SCHD is what you call a market cap weighted fund. Larger companies are gonna have a higher weighting inside the fund, but let's not get into that. As a bonus to you, I do have a video where I go through these four factors. So if you're interested, later on in this video, I'll tell you how to find that. But these 100 stocks that made into SCHD they didn't do well in 2023. And so I decided that I wanted to figure out what happened. Why did this happen? Why did they not perform well? And it turns out it was actually way harder than I thought it was gonna to be to figure this out. Love to live. First, I had to get the holdings from the SCHD portfolio by going over to the Schwab website. What I did was I navigated over to the portfolio area. There was a place where I could download the holdings. I put those inside an Excel spreadsheet and then once I got those, I had to find some metrics on those stocks. So what I did next is I went to Finviz. Once I went over to Finviz, I pasted all the different tickers inside the Finviz screener. So I copied and pasted all of those metrics over into an Excel spreadsheet. And then I created this. So what you're looking at here is all that data from that spreadsheet I was just talking about. I put it into this nice visual representation that I created in Photoshop for you because Let's face it, 
we want things to look nice on YouTube. And so you'll see the gray box, that's the S&P 500 sector returns for 2023. The blue is gonna be the SEHD sector returns for 2023. There's a couple really important sectors that I wanna point out here because I think this does help us tell a bit of a story. So the tech sector, for example, up over 57%, the S&P 500's portion tech sector. So while the S&P 500's tech sector was ripping, SEHD's also did very well, but it did not get close to the plus 50% return. Also communication services up over 50% as well for the S&P 500, negative seven-ish percent. So that's not good. And you'll see a lot of these other sectors, they also underperformed the S&P 500 sectors. Consumer discretionary underperformed, industrials underperformed, materials underperformed. Financials did outperform, which was a good one, but then we had healthcare underperforming, we had consumer staples underperforming, and then we did have energy outperforming. To put these returns into context, I wanted to show you how much, for example, tech was inside the S&P 500. So about 28% of the S&P 500's portfolio is inside the tech sector. Now compare this to SCHD, only 12.2% is in tech. So it's a much lower portion of the portfolio than the S&P 500 index. And we know that tech did the best last year, which kind of makes sense. Why SCHD didn't perform quite as well, but it doesn't really show the drastic difference. We can see that for the S&P 500 index, communications is just over 8%, but for SCHD, it's just over 4%. What I was hoping was that this was going to give me the answer, and unfortunately, it just didn't. And one of the reasons was I couldn't find old data on SCHD sectors. I wanted to know if there was a big change in the sector allocations of SCHD over the years, and I just, I can't find it anywhere on the internet. So unfortunately, I hit a wall. Honestly, I was getting a little frustrated, you know? It's been taking me hours and hours to figure this out, and I can't do it, so time to take a little rest, take a break, rest the mind, see if I can get my mojo back, and then it hit me. I had all of these old videos on my YouTube channel where I have screen recordings of the SCHD ETF. So I went through tons of my different videos on SCHD. Honestly, I have too many. One of the reasons I haven't made an SCHD video in a long time, I don't want to be that guy that makes SCHD videos every single week. But as I was going through these, I found something. Do you see it? Here's a hint. What does this say the tech sector's weighting of SCHD is? 21.4%, right? Well, what's it today? It's 12.2%. So we went from just over 21% to just over 12%. That's a big decrease for the best performing sector in the stock market last year. So could this be it? This led me to my next idea, which was a chart I had recently seen, showing the returns of the Magnificent Seven, the largest companies inside the S&P 500. Look at these returns. Almost every single stock here is up over 50%. Nvidia, Meta, Tesla, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Apple. Are any of these stocks inside SCHD? Actually, no. Which led me to my next idea, that it's literally just these big stocks that SCHD doesn't have, and that's the reason why it didn't perform well. But guess what? Actually, that wasn't true either. Because then I saw this other chart. If it was just the case that the largest companies inside the S&P 500 are the ones that made all the money, and just that SCHD does not have those stocks in it, so that's the reason it underperformed, that was the next theory, and that theory was wrong. This chart from RBC shows us why. Look at the dividend aristocrat return only just over 8%. That's the closest we have to SCHD. Now, look at the S&P 500 value, up over 20%. It cannot be that the Magnificent Seven are the only ones driving the returns if value is also doing well. And everyone always associates value with dividends. So how did the dividend aristocrats not do well, but value did? So this leads me to my conclusion. For as long as I can get money on my cash, that's highly competitive with the yield that SCHD pays, I think the demand for SCHD and the stocks inside SCHD will stay low. If I can go get a money market, like the Schwab Value Advantage Fund, SWVXX, and I can get 5.24% with no risk. People who invest in SCHD and the stocks that are inside SCHD, they have a fierce competition right now with cash. Yes, you can get 3.54% dividend yield in SCHD, with potential capital appreciation, but there's risk. And there's basically no risk in this money market. So for now, the way I see it, as long as you can get high yields in money markets and in your cash, the advantage of SCHD type stocks and ETFs will be greatly diminished. If you right now think that interest rates are gonna go down in 2024 and soon people will get less money on their cash, I think SCHD may be a great place to have money. Now at the end of the day, what do I know? What does anyone know? 
I could be so wrong. Interest rates could go down, SCHD could still go down. But that's what I think is gonna happen. So for me, I would be banking my decision either on the fact that I'm a long-term investor and I like dividend stocks and I like SCHD because I think dividend stocks are gonna do well over the long term. I'm gonna just keep buying it. If I'm emotional and I'm scared that I'm gonna put money in and it's not gonna perform well, I might think to myself, well, maybe see what happens with interest rates. Like I said, I could be completely wrong. I'm not a financial advisor, but there is more to learn about SCHD. And so if you do wanna learn more, you're gonna probably wanna watch this video right here.